All right, folks, welcome to another edition of Ascension Outdoors. I'm Lyle Johnson. And I'm Ghost of Guys. From South Louisiana, I guess I should explain. Looks like the kind of home for my kind of man. We were fishing in bayou streams and dreaming from dream to dream. Flipping on what mama nature stored. Yeah, you won't believe the things I saw on no Lake Mara Pond. Mama Nature, you're gonna drive us all insane. For the rustle of their wings in that cold December wind brings me back to the banks of Mara Fall. Ascension Outdoors is brought to you by the following sponsors. All right, man, we are cinching outdoors today, huh? Because we kind of outdoors a little bit. You might hear a few boats in the background, but uh, that's kind of what we want to talk about a little bit to start off with anyway. You know, uh, Lake Bash was a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and that marks the real beginning of the stuff down in this area. And so uh, boating safety takes a big precedence right now. No doubt, man. And, you know, one thing, one statistic that you can't really hide is the need to wear a life vest. Oh, without a doubt. No doubt. That is probably the number one right. thing that saves people's lives. And right. so many people that's involved with drownings would, wouldn't have drowned if they'd have just been wearing a life right. vest. It would have prevented some, not yeah. all, but some. Yeah, know, a whole some bunch. Of trauma, but uh, right. some of them, uh, you know, they got boats. It ain't like it used to be. No. They got boats drive 100 miles an hour now. Sure. And, uh, don't have to get souped up for it. You know, they got they big, 45, 50 foot long, and uh, hey, I like them. You know, I love watching them ride by, but they go fast. And yeah. They like to go 20 miles an hour like they used to when we was kids. You know, the point of wearing a life vest, and I try to wear them sometimes, even fishing. I know right. to get uncomfortable right. when you're fishing, and, and it's hot, and it's in your way. Right. I, I do wear them sometimes when I'm actually fishing, but and I, I guess you're really supposed to, but, but but by all means, when you're traveling in a boat, you need right. to wear one now. Right. In, in the wintertime or the summer, it's the summertime right now. I know it's hot. Like in the wintertime, it's, it's easy to put one on because it blocks the wind and all. But right. your, your chances, you know, even at that time of the year, if you fall in the water, uh, chances of hypothermia, if, if yeah, somebody don't get to you, bad, right. it's bad. But in the summertime, I, I don't know. It's just it's just a need to wear them, y'all. It, it's something that you need to put in the back of your mind and, and wear them. Kill switches, another thing. Very important. That that you should do, and I'm I'm famous for that. Jumping up, cutting the boat off, jump up to go to get to the trolling motor, want to off. make a cast, and pull a <laughs> kill switch. I, I, well, you know, there's a few other items that you need to have, and it'll keep you from getting a ticket and having some issues as well. You know, all boats now have to have a throw. Mechanism, right. you know, either a ring right. or a cushion, something flat, something you can throw for rescue. Uh, you got to have a sound making device, whether it's a whistle or a horn. You got to mm -hmm. have that with you. You got to have a, a fire extinguisher, you know, right. in case something happens on the boat. And, uh, you know, a lot of people go out to have fun, you know, and they'll forget this and don't know this. And, hey, you need all that stuff with you, not just to keep you from getting a ticket, but to help. Uh, in a pinch as well and and drinking and boating that is very serious problem yeah, also yeah it's by so, all means if you can if you're gonna go out and that's what you're gonna do myself i don't care to do that in the hot summer sun sit out there and drink right. beer and, and try to fish or something like that but let's get realistic with it if you're going to do it now at this day and time you you need a driver yeah, that's not it's doing that got to that way just like it does on the road a designated yeah. driver you need one in a boat because like i said Boats go so fast these days, you just can't uh, can't stop. It just happens too None. fast. Sometimes you just fall out the boat. You know, you was talking a while ago about a, a, a throw ring or right. some type of device to get to somebody that's in the water. How many times have you seen, and I just read one the other day where somebody felt, or somebody was drowning, having problems off the, 
off the uh, seashore right. at, at Lake Pontchartrain. Right. Another guy goes in to help him. Right. Well, guess what happens? He's yeah, the one that ends up drowning. Right. So somebody that's drowning is going to grab onto you and try to push you down so they can stay up. If you give them something to float on, then, then you're doing okay. Right. And that's what normally happens yeah. right there. They're in a panic mode and you're trying to help. Oh, yeah. Or you know oh, it's you don't want to in a right. dangerous situation. Hey, look, we're going to uh, take a trip with uh, Jay Ellis a while back. I got a chance to fish with him a couple of years ago and uh, right out of his hometown in Tyler, Texas, before he moved to Oregon on a uh, private lake, you know. Uh, real nice opportunity, great guy, you know, has been down here and helped us do some stuff before. And, uh, uh, he fishes the FLW circuit right now, and so uh, we're going to take a trip down there and uh, catch a few bass. Let's take a look at it. All right, man, let's be right back after this break. If you're looking for a pontoon boat, head down Airline Highway to Premier Performance Marine in Gonzales. Pontoon boats have come a long way, and whether it's a South Bay, Excursion, Berkshire, or Bentley Encore, let the friendly folks at Premier Performance Marine find the pontoon boat that's right for you. Whether you want a traditional cruiser, a stern lounge, or a fishing model, we have the largest selection of pontoon boats in the South. Come see Wendell or Phillip at Premier Performance Marine and visit MyPontoons.com for the latest deals and specials. Ascension equipment right here on Airline Highway. A lot of machinery here that a lot of us don't really like to operate a lot of times. It involves cutting grass. I know myself, I'm not a big grass cutter, but we gotta do it. We got anything from the conventional riders to the right. zero turns. Ain't no better place to get you one than right here. Roland J. Robert Distributor in Burnside has been keeping South Louisiana fueled up since 1924. We provide wholesale fuel and petroleum products to industries and service stations. We also specialize in the development of retail convenience stores. Our people have the expertise and support to help you start a thriving business. If you're looking to build your own Chevron, Shell, or unbranded service station, call Keith, Jim, or Harold. Get fueled up with Roland J. Robert Distributor. Oh, look at that thing. Wow. That's a six or seven pounder. Man. Oh, oh yeah, you're a little bigger than mine. Yep. Be careful now, don't stumble and fall with that big load. Man, look at that thing. I bet that's, that thing's 20, easy 25 inches long. That is a big That's a giant man. There he is. Wow. All right. He doesn't feel real big, but. Hey, it's a start. It's only, we've only been fishing five minutes, so. Yeah. He's just a little guy. Look at him. All right. Oh, didn't even get him in the mouth. Well, hey, sometimes that's how it happens. Hey folks, you know we're out here today with a good friend of mine and tour pro Jay Ellis. Jay, I sure appreciate you inviting me out here. Lyle, it's always a pleasure to go fishing with a guy like you. I think this is this is the first time we've ever fished together. That's isn't it? it. And we've yeah. been friends for a while, but the first time we shared a boat, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, for me yeah, I've been looking forward to fishing with you for a long time. We've had this trip planned for a little while. Yeah, that's a good start, anyway. Yeah. What did you catch him on? On that. Uh, frenzy. Oh, a frenzy, yeah. yeah. That deep diver. Deep diver. Rolling it real slow. And uh, we're fishing here today in a, a private lake up near Athens, right? Right, we're near Athens, Texas. About a 45 minute drive from my home in Tyler, Texas. And uh, about a 100 acre lake. That's yeah. a nice, that's a pound or so, I'll give you. Yeah. Looks like one of those marsh bass down in Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, this, this here is pretty normal. We'll get, yeah, we'll get some bigger ones here. All right, man. Hey, the first cast. <laughs> good thing we moved. Yeah. Woo! Oh, yeah, that's a good fish. Oh, look at the size of that fish. It's a giant. You got me excited. I don't know what to do. Let's see if I can help you back here. She don't want to come up. 
Oh, that's oh, a huge fish. Really? Look at this. For monster. your first cast. <laughs> oh, look at the size. Let me look at the crankbait. Oh, look at that thing. Wow. That's a six or seven pounder. Man, Lyle, that's a, your first cast. First cast, what a bass. Gee. Man, I'm telling you, we might luck up and catch one here. That's a seven pounder, Lyle. Yeah, I'll tell Look you what, that. he's Look got that, that bait plug is buried. down in his throat. I mean, he ate that frenzy crankbait. Whoa. Dang. Well, that's a gut on that. That's a God. giant fish. I think that's that is a, a beauty. Oh, oh, that's a good one. Oh, look at Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Not as big yeah. as yours, but. That's still a nice one. Woo, look at him. He wow. tried to jump in the boat. Yeah, that's a nice one right there. Come here. Uh-oh. You got one? Yeah, I got one, too. Uh-oh. Two at a time. Double hookup. Now, this must be a little school of fish right here. Cool. That's How big's yours? Big one. Oh, wow. he's bigger than mine. Yeah. Let me see if I can limp him for you. I hate to make you do all this work. I know. Oh, oh yeah, man. yours is a little bigger than mine is. All right, well, I'm going to let you get your own fish off the hook this time. Mom, yeah. I think there's a school of fish right here. And uh, I want to get back in the water personally. See if I can catch another one. Man, this is. Oh, yeah. Nice one. That's about That's a, a Texas five pounder bass. there. Yeah, good Texas bass. Now, they're hitting it right when I'm pulling it up. Pulling it up. Yeah. And I think they're following it, and then when yeah. it starts back up, they grab it. Hey, Jay, I know uh, a lot of special things happen in an angler's life. How was it like when you uh, actually got your first tour win? Oh, that was. A huge thrill because it's hard to win those tournaments right you know i and i'd kind of paid my dues before that i'd had uh, you know some a number of top finishes even top five finishes but without a win right and uh yeah i'll remember i'll remember it clearly though it was on the potomac river in, in uh september of 1993 and actually i knew it was a four-day tournament and i i was in uh eighth place after three days going into the last day really? and I busted a big stringer the last day about 19 pounds on the Potomac and I I jumped from eighth all the way to first, first. kind of wow. big come from behind victory and it was it was a big thrill you know because it I mean that's something you dream about as a kid right having a chance to win a major tournament and and uh, I'd been close I'd had some seconds and thirds and still but I couldn't quite get over the hump and uh, but that was I'll never forget it yeah that was definitely a a big thrill there's one. Yeah. Oh, goodness. On the jig. It doesn't feel that big, but. Yeah, it is. Oh, look oh. at him. He's not that big. Just About a five, five pounder. And a half, yeah. Man, what a, what a deal. Let me get that one for you. Come on, there, big fella. Yeah, oh, that'll man. work. Yeah, that's the first jig bite we've had today. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. That's that jig. My Berkeley J. Ellis Classic Jig. I tell you what, that's, that's a not a bad one. Fish, huh? That's a dandy. You got that one on that jerk bait, huh? Yeah. Wow. Not a bad fish, but we're catching so many yeah, of those I know. Others so many that big ones. Yeah, I know. so small, but that's a nice oh, fish here. I heard too. one jump right there. Oh, hey, there's yeah. a big one oh, under the dock. God. Oh, look at I got him hung up on that on rope. rope. He's hung up around that rope. Ah, uh, come here, fish. <laughs> I can't get him. He's stuck. I think I'll be able to go in like this and get him, though. Uh, hold that rod for me, Lyle. You got it. There he is. Wow, Look at that chunk. Nice God. Woo. That's why it, don't, don't ever let anybody tell you. When you're flipping docks, you can't throw it over a rope because that's the oh, kind yeah. of fish you can catch on the back you of a rope. Him, huh? I roped him in. Yeah, you're right. Man, oh man. Look at that one. He's not real big, but he bit that jig like he was a 10 pounder. Wow. He, whoo. What a fish. Again, folks, this is that the Berkeley J. Ellis Classic jig that I won the 2002 Bassmasters Classic on, and it catches them. But so, you know, early on, Lyle, I, you know, I was in high school kid, and I yeah. had the dream of being a professional bass fisherman. And, uh, 
And I, so I, I pursued that dream with all my might. You know, I try to. All, I went to college. I went to Oregon State up in the Northwest. Right. And but the whole time I was going to college, my goal was to be a pro bass fisherman. Right. You know, that's what I really wanted to do. And and uh, I just uh, got out of college. I started fishing the regional tournaments on the West Coast, in the Northwest, and in California, and the Arizona, all throughout the West Coast, and kind of used that as a minor league experience, like you would. I, after college, I did fish at that minor league level for about two and a half years, and I had a lot of success. And then I thought I'd step up and fish the Bassmaster Tour. Right. I didn't have the success that I thought I would, you know, on the Bassmaster Tour, and I really struggled for a while. In February of 1993, it was really a turning point for me in my fishing career, and that's when I, I uh, accepted Jesus Christ as my yeah. Lord and Savior, and I got, you know, and and. Uh, started a relationship with the Lord and incorporated him into my whole life and and he really helped to establish my career you know everything in my personal life and in my career and everything turned around when I, once I got to know Jesus a little bit and uh, the way I see it you know life is kind of it's like a balance beam Jesus is right in the middle of that right. of that of that balance and if you keep your life centered on him then your life's perfectly balanced you know you want to you want to um, work real hard and put forth your best effort like everything depends on you, right. but then at the same time you want to pray hard and trust Christ and have a relationship with Him like everything depends on that. Then you have that perfect balance where your life is balanced. Right. That's, what, that's what it is. It's a, com it's a blend, a combination of right. keeping your life perfectly balanced. And before I met Jesus, I didn't, I didn't have that spiritual side of my life, and I was just very self-centered. Right. Well, I just cared about me, myself, and I. In my fishing career, and I didn't get anywhere. But right. when I, when God comes into your life and you're, you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you want to help other people. You want right. to enrich other people's lives. You want to give of yourself, right. and that's what helps to balance your life out. And you, then that's when, when success really comes into play is when you, when you have your life balanced. Yeah, he hit it right oh, that's on. A big that one. is a monster. I mean, a monster. That's the biggest one yet. Oh, cool. that's a, oh it is the biggest one. Whoa, my! Stay on there, baby. Oh, look at the wow. size of that. Get him, Lyle. That's a 10 pounder. It might be an 11 pounder. That's a mule. Son, yeah. that's, a, that's 10 pounds. That's Easy. 10 pounds. Dang, man. Thank you, Jesus. What a fish. Oh, that wow. frenzy crankbait. What a monster. <laughs> that's a 10 pounder. Look at that thing, Lyle. So careful now, don't stumble and fall with that big wish. load. Man, look at that thing. I bet that's, that thing's 20, easy 25 inches long. That is a beauty. That's a giant bass. Oh, that's man. one of the bigger bass I've ever caught in my life. My biggest fish is 11, 11. I don't believe it's 11 pounds, but it's a, it's every bit of nine, probably closer to 10. It's pretty heavy. Let me see that. Ooh. Yeah, that's a chunk. That's a long fish. Yes, it is. Oh, there's a big one, Lyle. Ooh, look at there. Ew. Not as big as that last one. Look at that one. Whoo, he's a hot little pistol. Come here, darling. Oh yeah, look at there. Ah, I almost had her. Come here, let's try that again. Ah, well Man, that's just a little old measly six pounder. Yes, sir. There's another big one. Measly six pounder. Oh, there's a big oh, one just man. out in front of the in front of the boat. You're killing me. You're killing me, bro. Look at that sucker fight. Yeah, that is a beauty too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hold on, fish. Look at there. Oh, on that jig, another yeah. five pounder, big old. Nice full belly. That's the kind of bass I like to catch. Just ate that jig. That's right. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, drop shot. Three and a half pounder. Yep. They're not the big ones. Yeah. These little old gulp worms. Hit it, Hit going, it going down. down. You want me to land them for you? Yeah, if you don't mind. Wow. 
Oh, that spoon is way down in his throat. Oh, oh. I don't think he's as big as that first one you caught, but. Oh, uh, he's pretty close. He's though. pretty close. Not bad, though. Huh? Not bad for a Louisiana boy. Yeah. Nice. It don't well, get folks, better than that, man. It don't happen like on. this all the time in the outdoors and ascension, does it? I got one. Ooh, I got a big one. Yeah. Ha, I got Whoa, it. look at here, bro. What a double, huh? What a double. Double About trouble. About a six and a half and a five. Son, that's fun. I got mine on a big old bucktail hair jig. It doesn't yeah. matter what you throw in there when they're schooling, though. Is that beautiful or what? That's the Texas two-step right there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Here we go. Man, wasn't that a great fishing trip we had today? You know, Todd and I spent a little bit of our time today talking about the influence our fathers had in our lives. And he was very fortunate to come up in a home that was real stable. He had a dad that uh, took him and uh, did things with him that he enjoyed doing, and they had a good time in their life. And you know, it's not always that way. Uh, uh, some kids grow up today without a dad, a full-time dad, or, but you know, it's not a new uh, concept. Uh, back in the Bible there was a man named Achan who was not a good example for his family and it cost his wife and even his children. But on the other hand there was a young man named Josiah who became king of Israel and the Bible says he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in the steps of his father. And so he had a good role model. And you know but it's never too late. You know my dad wasn't that great of an influence on his eight children but a long life's path he met Jesus Christ and all that changed. So if you find yourself today in a place where you're not the man, you need to be a positive male role model. You know, I encourage you to uh, start a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Uh, on the bottom of your screen, there's some information where you can get in touch with somebody. I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Uh, they'll be able to pray with you and they'll be able to start you on the road to finding out what lies beyond your horizon. We'll see you next week. Whether it's keeping you warm through the winter, helping you get dinner on the table, or making sure your fresh catch is frying just right, Feral Gas makes your house a home. Our dependable nationwide network ensures you have propane when you need it. When choosing a propane supplier, you want the right partner. Feral Gas employees live right here in Louisiana, so they understand the needs that you have as a home propane user. Join the Feral Gas family today. Alright folks, welcome back. I tell you what, that was a trip of a lifetime there, bro. We oh. caught some fish that day. Yeah, I imagine so to get the fish with a guy of that <laughs> yeah. nature. Well, but we had a great day fishing as yeah. well, man. I tell you, we had a blast. Alright, let's get a couple of pictures here from the hunting season still this year. This is Brennan DeVille, 13 years old, first time in the woods in his big eight point on his first hunting trip. The book, buck was 17 inches wide and killed it in Wilson, Louisiana at Shot Hole Creek Hunting Club. Hey, here's a picture right here of me and Jeff Brumfield. Now, Jeff, he's charter boat captain out of Grand Isle, basically, right. in that area right there. Flaming Hook Charters is his name. He's an excellent fishing guide to go right. with, y'all. If you uh, need for a saltwater trip and you want to catch some fish, specks, redfish, whatever the case may be, get in touch with Jeff Brumfield, Grand Isle, Louisiana. You they, won't be they tearing them up right now when you get out there, bro, to the islands and off oh, the yeah. beach right now. They smoke them. Bro. Well, that's the way it goes, you know. That's right. Right now, the wind's starting to slack down a little bit, so that's that's going to be red hot. Yeah, you're right. All right, next picture I got here is Rhett Malone's song picture with some of the rabbits on a hunt at Bayou Black Marsh, hunting with his dad, Quentin Malone's song. 
Mike Dixon, Toby Shexnot, Ivan Mancuso, Chad Hunt, and Ryan Phillips. Uh -huh. Hey, this is a good fishing trip right here. Uh, Bernard Babbin caught this 45-pound catfish on a rod and reel fishing tight line in South Pass, that's in Manshack, that is. Yeah. And you know, that's not uncommon to really oh, catch no, them big, big catfish big in that there. deep, deep pass right, right there. Years ago, I had a friend of mine that I worked with out at Marathon, named Nelson Hustle. He used to fish there, uh, tight line and right. off the catfish, you know. One day, one day he caught about a 60-pound tarpon right, right there. Yeah, he jumped mm -hmm. out the water, done the classic oh, tarpon yeah. thing, yeah. <laughs> right there in Manchac Pass. Yeah, you're right. Beautiful bro. catfish right there. You can catch them right there, bro. Yeah, it's been around a while. All right, man. This picture here is Levitt Hamilton and Kelly Wheat with the 14.81 pound stringer that took first place in the media bass tournament out of Bayou Black Marina. That's a real nice string there, bro. That is some pretty fish right there. That's right, bro. Congratulations, you two guys. That's some good fishermen right there. They are, and I, I think as we speak right now, they're in a couple of tournaments this weekend, right? Right as I'm speaking, uh, one of them out of bias net and all. I, I want to say that those guys right there. Yeah, I mean, they, bass. Yeah, yeah, I know quite a few tournament fishermen that are fishing this weekend, and some of them was even talking to me the other day of Jumbalife Festival, which was a great success, by the way, y'all. Good job again on that. About going down to uh, putting in bias net and going to venison fishing. Yeah, you're right. You know how that goes. Here, here's a trip out. At that out of state that uh, I've been wanting to make for quite a while myself, one of these. Uh, Danny Gotro and Alan Alford killed both of these Missouri turkeys the first morning they hunted. And look, there's still a lot of turkeys in Missouri now. Yep. The, the number has declined from what it was back 10, 12, 15 years ago. But uh, boy, that's one of them big gobblers right there. Big old, big old gobbler. Get a little bigger than what they do around right. here. The habitat's a little better right. for them. And uh, beautiful. Beautiful couple of turkeys right there. Congratulations on that. And uh, whenever y'all get ready to invite somebody. Well, here it is, bro. Let this is fresh, hot off the press, bro. From last night, frogging, opening night. Opening night. Brandon well, Paxton true. holding up a couple of the biggest frogs they caught on opening night. And down below where he is is a cage with the rest of them in it, bro. It's full up. I got an oh, idea of where they went. Oh, I'm pretty sure. I and I think I was wading back in that swamp yesterday morning <laughs> before 12 o'clock midnight came, That's crawfishing. Right. And, uh, That's right. Congratulations on that. Hey, this is a mess of catfish that we caught. Uh, uh, it's been a couple of years ago out at Lake Desalman. This is uh, my daughter, Caitlin, a friend, Laura, and myself. And Lake Desalman has been producing some nice catfish catches this year, yep. along with in certain part of it in that bay around where um bob buff comes out in some nice catches of brim and stuff right. so uh if you're looking for a destination to go fishing uh I'm sure that'd be a good yeah, one you're right they wiping them out yeah make it to the catfish bro. yeah well that's good it's, it's time yeah. of the year for that and that's, that's right. good that to have that option right there all right folks we appreciate y'all tuning in man we'll see you next time on ascension outdoors <laughs>